There are many symbiotic relationships in nature, but there is no closer interspecies bond than the one found between humanity and their dogs. Canines and humans have been close companions for so long that we've influenced the course of dog adaptation and development. While we've changed dogs, dogs have also changed us. The title Man's Best Friend is more than appropriate in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal info. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy or visit us at our home on the web at LDTaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Richard, to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Almost went out of order there. Uh, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> it is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a Canis comrade, but more on that later. Yeah, I didn't sign up to be a witch. Now that I see this nomenclature, I'm like, ah, uh, mm, not into witchcraft. I don't. What? I don't. I don't, I don't want a familiar. Ah. Uh, well, it? we're familiar with them. We yeah. sure. Are. We are talking about just, uh, I mean, they're pretty rare. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, if you, it, it takes photographers months of sitting in the same spot to see one. Um, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, we're talking about dogs. We're talking Regular about dogs. dogs. And give me a moment. If you are watching this on YouTube, I have brought my dog. Which one? Morph. Oh my gosh. The most, uh, the most nimble and yet small enough to pick up. Yeah, this would not work. Would not have worked well with Yoshi. Weighs fifty pounds. But he would have enjoyed it. Morph is kind of enjoying this. He was also like, just, just sound asleep. Uh, 15 <laughs> seconds ago. So, so he's probably pretty upset with me. He, he was pretty upset to be locked in this room with me, to be honest. He doesn't really... He doesn't come in here very often. But he's like, oh, I want to I, I, I hold the dog while I talk about the dogs. I want to give you scritches <laughs> while I talk about the scritches. Um, this episode was suggested by Calvin... Uh, thanks for giving a suggestion, Calvin. Also, he, he, I think he gave this suggestion because he has a new dog named Maverick. So, so, so say hello to Maverick for us, Calvin. And I think we've talked about it. Maverick is a great name for a dog. It is a very good name for a dog, especially if you're a little boy who really likes planes. Or just someone who does their own thing, you know? Yeah. Or if you are a little boy who really likes Senator John McCain. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot his uh, nickname was Maverick. Um, <laughs> Maverick is that one of those things? I don't know. Yeah, that's that. Th- it definitely sounds like a nickname that you come up with for yourself and try to get other people to call you that. He was a war hero, so do you do, I'll allow it? <laughs> does, does that allow you to just be like, call me Stone? <laughs> yeah, I think it does. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so we, we have we are, names for this. We're talking about the dog. We're Friday. talking about man's best friend, dog, the the bounty hunter, the brown noser. Literally, it's a dog. The family familiaris, the furry friend, the fairly furry friend. I'm so sorry, um, Morph. I feel bad because I he's he was so comfortable and I've uprooted his whole world down there so he could be into in the shot, but you know. <laughs> he's a dog and I'm a human. And I, I call the shots. <laughs> I call shots around here. 
Um, let's taxonomize a dog. This is quite possibly the most famous animal we've ever done. Mm-hmm. Quite probably because it's the most famous animal in existence. Um, but it th- probably it's uh, the kingdom is the one you know, love, and are in Animalia. You share a kingdom with dogs. Uh, the phylum is Chordata. Class is Mammalia, of course. Orders Carnivora. By the way, I wrote this whole one, this whole uh, taxonomy without having to look it up. I would have had to look up the genus and species, or the at least the species, had I not had you, had you not already had it as part of the list. But I knew the Kingdom Phylum, Class, Order, and Family. The family is Canidae. Mm-hmm. Uh, the genus is Canis, and the species is Familiaris. So Canis Familiaris. It's when you summon the spectral ghost of a dog using your the witchcraft that you do know, um, and it helps you brew potions and scare Harry Potter. You had a Familiaris for a while, but then you upgraded to a minivan. <laughs> no, I still have a family Yaris. You still have the Yaris? I still have the Yaris. Oh wow. We traded in the, the the Sonata for the minivan, but I still have my little my little dented up white tic tac box that <laughs> doesn't have any hubcaps. Um But I will tra- probably trade that in for a truck here here soon because I'm in Jacksonville. You can't be respected in this realm without a truck. You're not even allowed <laughs> to vote unless you have one. And so it's been rough, I got to say. Yeah, the founding fathers said we should own property to vote. And the property they actually meant was a truck, a pickup truck. Well, we just have different founding fathers they meant here. Land. This, this is Jacksonville, and that's what Andrew Jackson said. He said you must have a truck oh. and land uh, in order to vote. And uh, it's and then he shot someone in a duel. Right after that, and they put him on the twenty for not having a truck for that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much all we know about Andrew Jackson. Um, so since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show: critter groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the term of venery, or what is the collective noun? It's three ways to say this, to ask the same question. If you saw a group of dogs, not would you, but could you say it's A, a bark of dogs, B, a cage of dogs, C, a kennel of dogs, or D, a woof of dogs? It's a pack of dogs. That's why I said could, not would, because you would say a pack. <laughs> Um, a kennel would be good, but I'm going to go with a wolf of dogs. Final answer. I did not anticipate you picking that one. Uh, the answer is C kennel kennel of dogs, but like that's something else. You can have a kennel of dogs. You can literally have a kennel of dogs and, but then like, and you just that kennel of dogs dogs would and there's a kennel of dogs. Yeah. That kennel of dogs irresponsible with the language (laughs) kennel of dogs would be full of a kennel of dogs. (laughs) (laughs) It's not good. Uh, This is how you harm people with a term of (laughs) entry. Hey, listen, if you set up a tiny church, you're going to have a congregation. You can have a congregation of praying mantises made up of a congregation of praying mantises. They cannot, in good conscience, take communion. They're not communi- communing members you don't, of the you, congregation. You don't, you don't need to be able to take communion to be a congregation. Maybe they're the congregation of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Who knows well, what, you, what's you, going we, on we in their tiny not, brains. We cannot, we cannot <laughs> baptize a praying mantis. It'll drown. Just a quick, quick dip. Or it's like little parasites will come out. Quick dip in the dew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. It's a kennel of dogs. Uh, there are many. There obviously it's yes, it's a pack of dogs, but there are several, and kennel is one of them. Um, would you like to know what a dog looks like? <laughs> this is hard to do, so yeah, sure, yeah. Um, 
So dogs are the it most like a lot. variable mammal on Earth with around 450 globally recognized breeds. They're also the most abundant species of carnivore on Earth. Huh. Which makes sense because most carnivores are greatly outnumbered by their prey. Because that's True. that's that's how a good balance works in in the in nature. But we have said nature hit the bricks. We got this. We're gonna take these carnivores and we're gonna put them in our house. And we're gonna feed them kibble. Yeah. Uh so they don't have to hunt. And so there can be lots of them. And we and we can sustain those populations no problem. Um, we started. But that being said, we also we also said. But in in addition to that, we're going to make sure that chickens outnumber the stars in the United States. So we'll have enough. <laughs> chickens we'll have enough for our extra carnivores. The stars is that a Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> quote? <laughs> it's a reference. Chickens do outnumber human beings. There are more chickens in the United States than there are stars in the universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the answer is gajillions. Um, so we started specifically breeding dogs, humans, not not me. Uh, don't rescue your dogs. Don't don't breed them. Don't buy from breeders. Um, we started breeding dogs in the 19th century. The royal we. Really? Mo most likely literally the royal we because uh, it was... You mean... Oh, I see what you're saying. The, literally the royal we because like Western culture did it because there are breeds of dogs that are thousands of years old. Right. So most of the breeds that we have today come from a much smaller variety of breeds. So it's not like there were no breeds of dogs up until 200 years ago. And then now we have all there were there were breeds of dogs, but there were not very many. And now we have four hundred and fifty. So uh, the, most the, of the breeds <laughs> that we have today are come from this. the Canis explosion. Yeah, which yeah. which was just the messiest part of the nineteenth century, and and that's including the Civil War. <laughs> oh man, I have a fact about a Canis explosion later. <laughs> oh, I've. I, I've having two puppies. There's quite a bit of Canis explosions that happen. Well, happened. <laughs> oh man, we're talking about different things. Are we? Keep going. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm just I'm I'm talking about um, violent bowel movements. They, uh huh. And you're probably talking about that one scene in Galaxy Quest. Maybe. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so when I say li quite literally the royal we, it's because um, uh, previously owning a dog was just as a pet was more of a rich person thing. Uh, the idea of taking care of and feeding something that didn't actively contribute to the household isn't something your average bubonic pe peasant was going to be interested in. Um, they got to work. You got to get a working dog. None of these frou frou whatever poodle things that don't do anything but sit there and eat and, and poop and and get pet um, so anyway we have 450 varieties even though they're all the same species so these are not subspecies these are breeds of the same species uh, they're Skull, body size, limb proportions, fur, the the like the 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 style and texture and thickness of their fur, the color of their fur, and their temperament have all been bred out into these breeds, these various breeds. Uh, other than that, <laughs> uh, well, did you know that all uh, dogs have an identical st skeletal? structure outside of their bones and their tails like the actual makeup of their skeleton obviously it's different it's bigger or elongated or whatever but they're um the structure is all the same the number of, of bones that they have and makes like sense that. to me yeah 
other than that, they don't really have very much in common. They have uh, the only thing that really connects them visually is that they have four legs, a tail of some sort. They're covered in fur. Um, they have uh, a carnivore snout and jaw. Yeah, they have the. Unless you're a bulldog, not, not really. It's yeah, <laughs> it's they don't. <laughs> they don't. Not all of them have that. Um, they all have. They're supposed to. Uh, carniv- carnivorous teeth. Um, they have eyes and ears, so there's that. Um, but there are so many varieties, and they vary so widely that I can't just tell you what a dog looks like. You know it when you see it. It's like, and you 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 might be seeing it right now. Yeah, and I am. I'm seeing it right now. Um, he's he's all curled up in a corgi blanket that I got for Bibby, but apparently she wanted to give it to Morph. Um. But if you live in like suburbia or a city, it's crazy that you're probably not more than a hundred feet from a dog at any given time. True. Unless you're driving. Um, so, since it's so hard to pin down what a dog looks like in general, I'm I'm very interested to see. Um, what you're going to come up with for their uh, size and dimensions. Good good question. So, welcome to the Love Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, saying your church, or barking the words measure up into LDTaxonomy.com. It's also the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. Uh, we do have a new measure up intro this week. Noise. And it all worked out. I know this one. Without further ado, the listeners' favorite part of the show. Measure up. So that comes from uh, from the from Calvin, who suggested this animal. Um, from his mom, Joy, and his sisters, Laura and Julia. And guess who's also in the video? Maverick's Maverick. in the video. This is this, this, uh, the, th- 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 that was an example of this, of that family trying not to be musical, <laughs> trying not to be talented <laughs> for a split second. <laughs> yeah. She says, we tried, try to do this one as unmusically as possible. They always send in very musical ones. We were tired of just absolutely slam dunking the the measure up every single time and here's here's just a candid one no makeup you know <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh and we'll take either one yeah they're both great it's real it's raw thanks. love it thanks thanks to everyone and we're so happy that uh on this dog episode we had a dog in our um measure up intro there's a dog Isn't in the great? room with me there's a dog in the measure up we're talking about dogs we're dog lovers here if only we could do this with all the animals. Yeah, yeah if, if only I could have a rhinoceros in here, curled up in the bed next <laughs> to me, just snuggled up in the corgi blanket. <laughs> um, so, yeah, since there's a million dogs, I went, um, I looked up what dog, because all of these dogs came from one, like, form. When they first like, because their grand their grandpa Canis Lupus, um, this is my favorite. Like Hogwarts when they professor. branched off, when they when they when they adapted, made adaptations that made them our friends, they um, they changed. And what did what's the what species do we have today that's as close to that as possible? And there are several Balto. candidates, um, but but yeah. Um, Huskies are pretty close to um, to the original design for Canis familiaris, um, and there's other there's other there's um, Greenland sled dogs that are that might be the oldest breed in the world, but there's other like there's the Afghan Hound, which is like um, they that that they they definitely have a different there's there's the two oldest breeds. 
are like there's two types of hounds that come from the Fertile Crescent, and then there's the sled dogs that come from high altitude northern uh, regions, and they are the best candidates we have for like the oldest dogs. Um, but I went with a husky. Uh, we can all picture a husky. We generally know what they look like in their sizes and dimensions. So let's talk about husky weight. Let's talk about husky boy jeans. Um, they're 35 to 60 pounds. Do you know a husky can be 60 pounds? That it's seems dog. low. I would assume that they would be up to up to like the eighty and eighties and nineties, like a like a German Shepherd. I don't know. German Shepherd being ninety pounds would be a very big dog. Um a muscular one. But so so yeah, six about sixty pounds. We're going with sixty pounds. So how many huskies go into the weight of an M two machine gun? Because my dog Yoshi, he's fifty pounds. And he's he's a little stubby boy. He's a, he's but they're athletic. They're he, lean, and they got a team with them. They put the team together. Yeah, they also they're also pretty fluffy, so they look bigger. And I'm sure are. there might be huskies out there that are like much heavier. Um, but this is we're going with the upper end of average. Yeah, and and Tubby Stubby Yoshi is is not going to be pulling any sleds anytime soon. <laughs> um, sixty pounds. bowling balls. How many of those? A little sausage. Go. So here's a hint. In World War, oh, how many of those go into the M2 machine gun? Uh, so in World War II, Americans used dogs to carry machine guns on their back. Um, it was a heavy burden. But if those dogs worked for the Soviets, they would have been trained to carry bombs to tanks and then explode. That and is there's your exploding dog sad. Dog. Isn't that the worst? You go to school in Soviet Russia to learn how to blow up a dog. It's what is this Sparta? Is this Sparta? (laughs) And if you know anything about working dogs, um, they often train them by like making them like play. So like bomb sniffing dogs are trained to make it a game by like, like whatever a bomb smells like they coat a toy and hide it. So every time a dog, a bomb sniffing dog or a drug sniffing dog is playing, I mean, is working. They think they're playing. Uh, so I can only imagine how they train these exploding dogs. And I, I'm glad the Soviet union collapsed because of that. Yeah. For that, Um, that single sole reason, the dog blowing up situation. I'm, (laughs) I'm happy that 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 entire regime is in the rearview mirror. Um, <laughs> uh, no, no other reason. Had they been nice to dogs, I would have been totally fine with it. Love it. Da 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 dog dog. Um, <laughs> M2 machine gun. That's um. I don't recognize it. Is that? The better question is: Is this is this something like? Goes on a tank? Um, I don't think so. Is this something to take down planes? <laughs> is this? It's like a machine. Like you know about machine gun nests in World War. Yeah, II? yeah. That's the kind of machine gun it would be. Oh, okay. A heavy machine gun. Um. Because I guess like any automatic gun is, is technically a machine gun. Um. Actually, yes, it is. Any automatic gun is is for sure a machine gun. <laughs> um, those things are really, really heavy, um, and only Master Chief can rip them off of their hinges and 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 walk around with them. So, I'm gonna go with Master Chief or Huskies. Apparently, Huskies can rip them off of their <laughs> mounts. No, but they can carry them. One. <laughs> um, man, 250 pounds sounds just so heavy. It can't be that much. 
I'm gonna say 150 pounds. Uh, and 60, so 2.5, 2.5 Huskies weights go into the weight of one of these guns. Final answer? Uh, yeah. The correct answer is 1.5. Oh, yeah. The machine gun was around 84, 90 pounds. And I'm guessing they're, the Huskies are carrying like the receiver I don't think they're fully laden with the the completeness of the machine gun. Pretty sure you can't. Like, you wouldn't be able to ru- run around. <laughs> Pretty sure you can't put an, a 90-pound gun on the back of a 60-pound dog and expect it to not be damaged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sit down and lay down and not move. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is not... I would a, expect... It, Maybe it's maybe that's how heavy it is with ammo in it or with all put together, and the dogs are only carrying parts. Against all odds, this is not the episode for dog lovers. <laughs> that's the, this that question was the worst part. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. Weren't well, there? Weren't there like? Uh, Greek, I spoke too soon. Wait a minute. <laughs> weren't there like Greek uh, war dogs about- where they like attached like blades to their backs so they could like disembowel horses as they ran underneath them. That sounds horrifying. Or maybe it was, but at least they didn't blow up. Let's talk about the length of a Husky. They're between 30 and 34.5 inches or 76 to 88 centimeters. So how many Huskies go into the length of the Iditarod race? Oh boy. I think we've already I think we've talked about this. Yeah, we have in a in a measure up. And I have But um, it's more apropos. I've just absolutely never not retained that that information even a little bit. Um So here's a hint. The Iditarod is a famous dog sledding race through the Alaskan wilderness. It's in it there are two routes, the northern and the southern, that that they every odd year they switch them, I think. In recent years, it has come to under controversy because some mushers push their dogs to the point of exhaustion and death. I forgot I had that in this part. That's the last sad thing about dogs we're going to talk about. Um, but, but on the other hand, sled dogs have an inboard need to pull. I suggest, I think we, I suggested this the last time we talked about the Iditarod. I suggest that they just make a rule that in order to win, you have to have a healthy sled dog team when you cross the finish line. Yeah, that's so. That's not a bad way to go about it. You just have a a vet come and take their ch- check them up. It's like they're exhausted, but they're healthy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The uh, uh, the Iditarod was uh is the same route that Balto took, right? That's the whole. That was where the Iditarod came from. Was the route from. Something Palmer to not Palmer, um, Nome, some some place to Nome, Alaska. Yeah. Um. To bring medicine for some sort of fever. Um. So how many huskies? Is I want to say eight hundred and fifty miles. Miles. Okay, so let's figure. <laughs> four point four million feet. Fifty three point eight million inches. And uh, what'd you say? Thirty four inches. Thirty four point five. Mm hmm. The answer is, my answer is 1.5 million husky lengths is the length of the Iditarod race. Final answer. Yep. The correct answer is 1.8. Whoa, hold on. Hey, hang on. Yeah, hey. <laughs> the Iditarod it is a nursing is school around. victory. I got 83%. Thank you. You're nice. <laughs> The Iditarod is around a thousand miles. You know who would walk a thousand miles? Slad dogs. Um, They'll definitely just fall to out just your to door. pull. Um, yeah. So like, there's two two routes. They're both around nine hundred something or other in change. 
Close to 1,000. So, do you have any fast facts? That, there can't be very much to say about dogs. Yeah, we actually have... There's there's so many animals we do on this show where there's they're they're like live at the bottom of the Lovecraftian abyss and we know next to nothing about them, um, and except the one cool thing that they do. So there's just not a lot of information about them, but we do not have that same problem here. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about where they live. It's everywhere. They live everywhere. Uh, in your house, probably. Dogs have been with humans for thousands of years. Again, you're prob you're most likely not more than a couple hundred feet away from a dog at any given time if you live in a city or suburb. Um, their diet consists of whipped cream, poop, and shoes. They are omnivorous. Um, at least my dogs, that's all they eat. Uh, they... Other stuff. It is... I No, it's... Shoes. No, that's that's what the vet told me. All in one big, just big kind of bucket, and they eat the bucket oh. too. Um, the I mean, it's whipped cream. Uh, the <laughs> dog food is made up of starch, grain, and m meat, which they need meat. If you're not feeding your dog meat, that's a bad thing. They can't produce vitamin D on their own. They need to get it through animal flesh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, you cannot have a healthy dog that is a vegetarian. If you are a vegetarian and you're forcing your dog to be a vegetarian, stop it. Uh, under behavior, all I have is written here is, uh, who's a good boy. That's, that's about it. Um, <laughs> it's all, it's all one word. Who's a, who's a good boy. My, do my dog's ears just perked up. Um, so. Yeah, stocks have been domesticated by humans since before we had agriculture. Um, they are is the most the instance of the most widespread form of interspecies bonding. Uh, it's between humans and dogs. And um, while owning a, a dog is just a pet, it's just something to be there and to be loved, and nothing else is was previously only for the wealthier in society. They are, they're not completely useless like a snake or a fish. They act as guards, uh, alarms, sheep herders, sled pullers, hunting companions, drug sniffers, blind guides, basketball players, detectives, rappers, bounty hunters, etc. <laughs> okay, that's a good list. 77.5 million Americans own dogs. Wow. 40%. That's 40% of American households. 67% of dog owners own just one dog. Oh, wow. I would have so thought that, that would be lower. That's a lot of lonely pups. 25% uh, own two. Hmm. And it says 9% own more than two. Uh, which checks out except for the fact that those three numbers equal 101%. So, so someone's not doing their, their <laughs> percentages correctly on Wikipedia. Um, uh, dog, dogs are also, and we're, 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 we're just gonna, we're just gonna nosedive straight back into that sad territory because dogs are also eaten as food in some East Asian countries, such as China, Korea, Vietnam, and the Philippines, even though places such as China have tried to, or I've tried to outlaw it. Um, I spent a month in China, and I do did not see anything like that. But I also didn't hang out in the seedier places. The seedy dog eating places. Yeah, well, that there was a restaurant nearby that was called the Seedy Dog, and uh, the I just didn't go dog there. World. That's that. That's the. That's China. It's a man. It's a manny dog world. Um, but you know, and and I've been to a lot of third world countries, and uh, dogs tend to be less pets and more of a uh, urban nuisance. 
Um, they, you know, in, in Peru and in Colombia and Haiti and the Dominican Republic, they form packs. Um, they're often in the feral, uh, and they, I'm sorry, they form kennels. Um, Oof. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Um, so they, there, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a, a dog population problem in a lot of these places. So I'm, I'm just all about the PSAs today. Spay and neuter your pets. <laughs> See, I, I, I kind of want the, the person who we adopted these, um, these dogs from, uh, Yoshi and Morph. Uh, she, she likes to share things on social media about dogs and animals in general. Um, and so kind of hoping that she, that we can send her this episode and she'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, let's, I'll, I'll share it with my friends, all my dog loving friends, and they'll love this episode. And then yeah. they'll realize we we talk a lot about dogs blowing up and being eaten, and then they'll stop listening to us. Um, Th- that that we put that behind us. <laughs> we, we that was that that was a different life. Yeah. That was that, <laughs> that was, uh, um, was a, I'm a new man. I don't talk about that kind of stuff anymore. Instead, now we're dogs' best friend. Right, it goes now. It's mutual. Um, instead, we're going to talk about whatever you're going to talk about because I, I don't. I actually don't know what the major fact is. The major fact is man's best friend. We're going to talk about. So there's a ton of re, there's a ton of little facts in this, but the ma- the over uh, the the the, the meta narrative of this fact is that dogs are uniquely. Um, and you mentioned it, uh, that dogs are uniquely, um, uniquely bonded to humans. We have a bond that is like more, that's closer than any other animal bond. So what does that mean? What does that mean? So over the years, dogs proximity to humans, um, allowed them to develop interesting abilities over other animals. Wolves are better candidates for so like from the beginning, wolves were better candidates for domestication than other animals um, because of their social hierarchy, their ability to initiate social interaction, even with other species. So a, a wolf will play with a, like uh, a, a baby goat until it wants to eat it. Um, you know, like that kind of thing. They can initiate social Lion interaction and the lamb. with other. Yeah. Uh, so dogs have an enzyme that wolves and other predators don't have. Um, which allows them to, to to digest. What do you think? Starch. Yeah, <laughs> it allows them to digest starch. Um, that w- wolves don't have that, and other predators don't have that. And it's similar to the to the digestive enzymes that are developed in people that adopt an agricultural agriculture as a main major means of food supply. So while we were like we got to develop this enzyme in order to, for us to eat all this wheat and grain. I um, do remember having to make that decision. Dogs were also and like, I- we'll do that too. We're with you to the end, buddy. Uh, if you want to eat, start eating gluten. Um, <laughs> that, so was a, they, that was a great moment of solidarity. So like um, the, among the oldest breeds, like the Afghan hound, there's another hound. I forget what the other one's called um, from the fertile crescent. And, Huskies and how um, sled dogs from the north, the ones in agricultural societies in the Fertile Crescent have more of these enzymes. But the Huskies that were like companion dogs to um, to uh, tribes that ate mostly meat because they lived in the Great White North or in Siberia. Um, they have fewer of these enzymes, so they 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 do what they are, their people do. Hmm. Um, also, dogs can read human body language, and they can understand gestures and pointing. Even chimpanzees need specific training to understand human hand gestures, but dogs will like pick it up innately. Uh, it took a while for my dogs to figure out to stop looking at my hand when I pointed at something. Yeah. So like 
they're also very they can also be very food driven and if you make a fist and make and point they might think you're they might be too preoccupied with you uh eating but like hand gestures hands, beyond just uh pointing um other hand gestures that like just body language they can understand um and they can also read pretty pretty amazingly uh facial expressions um on people apparently I didn't know this, but apparently intense emotions caused cause asymmetrical facial expressions in which um, more subtle facial expressions are favored on the left side of your face, but more intense facial expressions are favored on the right side of your face. So if like if you you might notice this, like if you like if somebody cuts you off in traffic and you like grimace, the like the right side of your face is a little bit more scrunched than the left side. Um, so like, I, this is the first time hearing of this. Me too. Me too. This but ar- anyway. armchair, f- 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 uh, what is, what is that f- science, science where what's, what's this, what's the science where like the head is split into different zones. That's no pseudoscience idea. from like the 19th century where that, that was like pretty, pretty steeped in racism to be honest, but no uh, idea it, what you're talking about. Ah, I can't remember what it is. You'll think like of it when if, if if you like if you, if you have you ever seen like a it's a bust of someone's head and it's like all like black lines divided across the head. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Keep talking. <laughs> so um, apparently, dogs when they're looking at you, focus on the right side of your face to read intense emotions. Um, and this is something that humans do to each other as well, innate, like uh, subconsciously. When you're talking to someone, you might focus on the right side of their face. I don't know about that. I, de- I've, I cannot say that I definitely remember doing that. But um, they did a study, I guess, where they looked at dogs and dogs will look at the, focus on the right side of the face to read human emotions. But they don't do that when they're looking at each other. So dogs looking at dogs won't look for these facial cues. Because they don't um, make those facial expressions, they right. make they, well, they 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 spew pheromones and and whine at high frequencies. Also, the answer to the 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 sci- pseudoscience I was talking about is phrenology. Oh, never heard of it. Interesting. It's bad, but anyway, yeah, it, that's what it's. <laughs> um. So, dogs also engage in deception with humans which suggests that they are able to read humans well enough to trick them. It also, it, oh, what is it? Now I've got a thing in my brain. I can't remember. I can't tell the tip of my tongue. While you're thinking uh, of that, my dog tries to trick me all the time. This, this dog is the one that's laying next to me. Because what he does, well, he doesn't try to trick me. He tries to trick the other dog, but he uses me, which is, I don't know if that's worse makes me feel sick inside you know (laughs) but the uh the like if if yoshi the big dumber dog is uh chewing on a bone that morph the small smarter dog and by the way that's like that's that's the abbott and costello that's the that's the harry and marv that's the larry and 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 bob there's always got to be the 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 big dumb one and the small smart one right Uh, why is it always that way you know i I feel like he got a there's pinky in the brain it's why is that the archetype? It's ah, so strange. But in, um, in 101 Dalmatians, a movie about dogs, the tall one is the smart one. Oh man, you got me there. I do not remember anything from that movie except <laughs> for the, the, the dad was named Pongo. That's it. Um, but I guess it seems to be like monster. a trope that when there's two, uh, two evil dudes, this, the, the or not two evil dudes just they're like a duo a duo of some sort of that that work off of each other usually comedy the short one or the small one is the intelligent one and the big one so it's like the, the bigger you are the dumber you are according to cartoon logic <laughs> which mm-hmm. is okay but it works here for my dogs anyway when yoshi is chewing on a 
bone that Morph wants. Morph will not try to take the bone from Yoshi because he doesn't stand a chance. Yoshi weighs four times as much as he does. Um, instead, Morph knows that Yoshi loves to be scratched. He loves the good scratches. Loves him, loves him up. Loves him so good. And so, and that yo that the only thing that will get him away from the bone is the possibility of, of getting the good scratches. So y Morph will come up and sit in front of me and he'll whine a little bit. He'll jump up on my, on my, like put his paws on my knees. Uh, and so I, so then I pet him. And then Yoshi's like, what? There are, there's scritches to be had. And then he, he comes over to get some, get some of the good loving. And, and Morph just is like, my work here is done. Goodbye. I'm leaving you human. I've wanted the bone. <laughs> and he goes and gets the bone. And Yoshi's <laughs> happy. He's just, he, Yoshi's like, you're going to pet me, right? This is what I, you, this is, th this was the, like, you know, unspoken nonverbal agreement we just entered into by, by sharing eye contact just now <laughs> there's like yeah, oh I'll, man i am gonna you pet keep, you <laughs> you keep teeing up the some facts but keep that in mind the unspoken agreement about with, through eye contact um so yeah so deception requires theory of mind are you familiar with the term is this phrenology again because i don't i'm no. not a fan um <laughs> In psychology, theory of mind refers to capacity to understand other people by ascribing mental states to them. So it is a theory in your mind of what another person's mind is saying. So in order to lie, you need to theorize how a person will react to manipulation. Um, so for a dog to be able to deceive a human or other dogs, they have to be intelligent enough and uh, in tune with human emotions enough in order to have a theory about how to get your mind to think a certain way. So that's not, that's very um, advanced in terms of just psychology and intelligence. That is. Yeah. So morph, he's not deceiving me, but he sees the bone and he's like, you know what that dog likes? That dog likes to be pet, and you and and he will go wherever the pet is good, and so he'll so he'll go over to me, and I'll pet him, and then he's like, you know, bingo, did it, and then now that's his favorite thing to do. But I know, I I see through the lies of the Jedi. <laughs> um, so I still fall for it though, because you're cute. Uh, another fact is that humans like dogs. Did you know that? I did. No, but we really do. Because a study found that both humans and their dogs have elevated oxytocin levels when they look at or touch each other. So oxytocin is a reward chemical that is tied to socialization. But wouldn't any cute animal raise oxytocin in, in humans? No, they wouldn't. The study also looked at wolves raised by humans and found that neither the wolves or the handlers had their elevated oxytocin levels from eye contact or from um, petting. Yeah, but wolves aren't like super cute. Would you get high oxytocin levels from like a guinea pig? Wolves are pretty cute. Um, and if you raise them. So the point is like they still have like a you know, handler animal relationship, but for some reason they don't, um, they don't, they don't like our chem brain chemicals don't reward us for, um, for wolf contact or like Fox contact, but with a dog, it, they will. So that suggests that not only are dogs adapted to live with humans, humans are adapted to live with dogs. Which is pretty interesting. Well, it I is feel like most natural and most good to have a dog. <laughs> I feel like the sentence "our brain doesn't reward us for wolf contact" basically sums it all up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, uh, so, 
We know that dogs can learn words, which is why we often spell out words like T-R-E-A-T or W-A-L-K. Um, if we a W. We too, call it a W here, a George <laughs> W. <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't want your dog to get too excited, you, you, you're going to worry about anything about George W. later. I mean, that <laughs> eventually backfires with dogs and with children because they under, understand that George W. means fun. Um. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all, though? Don't we all? <laughs> uh, not that guy that threw the shoe. Um, nope. But how, how many words can they understand and how can, how, how can they put them together? How well can they put them together? So have you heard of Bunny the dog? Bunny the talking no. dog? No. So recently, Bunny the talking dog has stirred up debate on this topic. So she's she she looks to be some sort of like poodle breed, maybe a mix, maybe a labradoodle, but she's black and white. Um but she's got that labradoodle face and the curly hair. Um and she said to know and use more than 90 words by pressing buttons with words on them, including concepts, concept words like what and why. Um, so th- th- for perspective, hmm. a two-year-old has about 50 words in their vocabulary. So this is m- m- like more advanced than a two-year-old. Um, I have two-year-old, a two-year-old. Yeah. So... Bunny supposedly has more more of a vocabulary than your two-year-old. But some suggest that Bunny doesn't actually have a larger vocabulary than a two-year-old. Rather, uh, rather than assigning words to their meaning, she might be assigning buttons and sounds to the way her human owners react to them. So she presses the button for walk. She doesn't understand that that is language that means walk. And maybe she does. Because dogs can like do understand that like walk means walk, um, but does she understand what bunny and why and who? No, I don't. I doubt she does. Um, but she might understand that pressing buttons in a certain order gets a reaction out of her owners, and she's you know experimenting with just like getting their reaction and getting attention from them. But there's is it one of those like broken clock is right twice a day. Like there's a lot of gobbledygook that comes out of this dog's just filthy, filthy mouth. But then like the uh, the occasionally she says something coherent and then it's like, oh, this is talking dog. (laughs) That's another criticism is that what this this person puts online might not. Might be the, in fact, she has said, like, she's admitted, like, yes, I, I, I put, like, the ones that are compelling to me um, on the internet. I'm, I don't just have her walking around pressing random buttons. Um, so it could be that she's just pressing random buttons. But she also, the owner claims that, like, these, the, when she does seem to get it, she seems to be, like, thinking and they seem to be in certain situations where she would, be using these words. So for instance, she like by the buttons, there's a mirror. And we, as we know, like despite their intelligence, dogs are not self-aware enough to understand that a reflection of themselves is themselves. Yeah. Um, But the manta ray is apparently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's some dubious food to me as well. But um, we talked about it. Go listen to our Manta Ray episode. Yeah, and it, I mean it's compelling because they, you know, the the and the reasons elephants why can they think too. so is is compelling. But we also talked in that episode about how like there might be, they might have reasons in nature in order to be able to understand reflections. Um, but and but and that doesn't and maybe the reflection test isn't even the best test for self awareness. But anyway, um, she. Bunny has bit like there's videos of her like looking at the mirror and saying, who is that? Like who is like to the mirror? Um, and hmm. I think the owner is trying to get her to like, understand that that's a reflection of herself, but she always asks like, who is that? Um, and there's like videos of her being like, why is bunny? Like, and people are like, oh, she's having an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, no, I think she just doesn't understand the buttons, like, all the time. 
Or she doesn't understand <laughs> all the buttons. Why? Maybe she's like, why did you name me after a different animal? I'm I'm not a bunny. Why did you name <laughs> me after a, some other animal? This is this is inconsiderate at best. So, yeah, that, there's a ton of stuff to talk about with dogs, but that's just a couple of things. Yeah, goodness, we could go on and on. And we already have. Mm-hmm. But dogs are dogs are great. I used to work at a booth at the Minnesota State Fair, and directly behind us was a dog show, and it was fantastic. <laughs> I, I, it was on four times a day, every day, for two weeks, and I never got tired of it. One one one's dog one dog's name was Spinelli, like from Recess. Recess? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that that little terrier could dance and uh and uh climb like straight up a log like a cat does like run up it really fast and get to the top and catch a, a frisbee and yeah, that was spectacular stuff. I saw a video earlier today of a dog of like people on a boat rescuing a dog out in the middle of the ocean. Like they were just like fishing or something or on a boat just for fun. Yeah. Out in the middle of the ocean. And there, then there was just a dog swimming. That, to them. Oh my goodness. And they rescued, they fished it out and it was a jack. Yeah, you do. And it just like shook it off was standing and walking around like, and people in the comments were like, Oh, that's a Jack Russell t- Terrier. That's like a t- t- 2% of its energy power. Swimming <laughs> yeah, <out into> the <laughs> <other ship. laughs> this is actually what it does every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, people were like, Oh, it was out in the o- middle of the ocean. It was just trying to burn off some extra energy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, yeah, you know, if you live in Spain and you have a you have a Jack Russell Terrier, you just send it across the Strait of Gibraltar every day just to <laughs> just to kind of, just to kind of make sure it goes to sleep at night. Because <laughs> other than uh, if you don't, it's gonna literally jump through the roof. <laughs> I used to have a Jack Alrighty. Russell Terrier, and she, she was a, a brimming with energy. Until she uh, bored a hole through the wall to get to a different room. And so we gave her to a homeschool family because they had more time to love her. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, do you got anything else? That's all I got. I mean, I know there's a lot more, but that is, for our purposes of the show, that is the dog best friend thank you calvin for that suggestion uh if you have suggestions you can send them to ld taxonomy at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you uh so for you out there in podcastia sit shake lie down and deceive others to get the good scritches like dogs here in life death and taxonomy Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast (laughs) that was a fun one that was a fun ending yeah except for the deceiving others yeah yeah yeah, you're right yeah